In this tutorial, we will create a fire and smoke simulation that can be played in a loop again and again. Let us first add a sphere in place of this default cube, since fires look more realistic with spherical objects. So, we will use this sphere as our flow object. Go to the object menu and add a quick smoke effect. Then, select the flow object and go to the physics tab and change the flow type to fire and smoke. You can also choose only fire or only smoke if you need something like that for your scene. Let us start the simulation now. The default settings in Blender usually do not create a good looking fire or even smoke. The fire looks very static and artificial. Also as you can see, the smoke gathers here, creating a layer. While our primary objective is to learn how we can loop this fire simulation, let us first make some bare minimum changes in the settings to have a realistic fire and smoke. We will start with resizing our flow object or this sphere by a factor of 0.75. Also, move it down a bit. Maybe just one unit. Perfect. Now, select the domain object and in the physics tab, change the resolution divisions to 40 or maybe 50. Then, scroll down, skipping all these fields, and scale up the vorticity field in order to create a turbulence in the fire and smoke. Also, select this dissolve checkbox and expand this. Change the dissolve time to 7. We should also enable the noise option in order to get a more realistic fire and smoke. The last thing is, increase the end frame number for the simulation to something like 400. We should also increase the length of our scene, so change this also to 400. We are done. Let us now go back to the first frame and start the simulation again. We can see a much better and perfect simulation now. The fire looks very real, and so does the smoke. Once the simulation is created, we will see how we can loop it indefinitely by creating the same frame at the beginning and the end. If you are new to Smoke Simulation, you can check another tutorial where I have explained all the settings in Smoke Simulation. The link is in the video description. To convert this simulation into loopable format, we need to first render this simulation and complete rest of the processing in the video editor within Blender. We have to also look into the material part for the Smoke domain. Let us stop this simulation and switch over to the rendered view mode. We cannot see any fire, and the smoke is hardly visible. Ensure the smoke domain is selected, and go to the materials tab. Now, expand this volume section. For the smoke to be thick, we need to increase the density value, to maybe 20 or something higher if you need a thicker smoke. Then scroll down, and we have to increase this black body intensity for the fire. Let us expand this panel a little bit, so that we can read the labels better. If we increase this black body intensity to say 1, it makes the fire somewhat visible, but it is still not good enough. The fire is still very faint and subtle. But we want to create a brighter fire. So use any higher value say 5 or 10 that suits your requirement. Now, the fire looks much better. You can play with these values and discover the correct settings that goes well with your scene. Okay, we can hide this sphere or the flow object in the actual render, it looks better. By default Blender does not show this icon for the render visibility, we have to enable this so that we can hide an object in the render output. Also, let us go to the render tab, expand this film section and enable the transparent option. This will create a transparent background for our smoke and fire. We can then use it directly in any other scene as well. In the Output tab, select the frame rate as per your requirement, we will go with 30. We have to then select a location, or a folder, where the output image files will be saved. Ok, the last thing is, we need to discard the first few frames when the fire starts developing. In a loopable scene, we cannot have something that happens only once. You can make another animation separately just with the initial few frames, and use it before the loop starts. Here, we will start the render process directly from frame 100. The total animation length will be 300. We are done with all the settings. So, let us render the animation. It will take some time. Once the render is fully complete, we will first verify the output. We can see in this folder, all the image files are generated as a sequence. Open another instance of Blender, 
and select the video editor option. We will complete the rest of the job here. Go to add image sequence. Then go to our output folder. There are total 300 files here, but we will take only half of them. Only the first half. So we will go from 100 to say 250. Select these 250 files and add them as one single strip. Then again go to add image sequence and add the rest of the files, the second set, as another strip. From 251 to the end of the list, 400. Select them, and click on Add. Ideally, this strip should go here, after the first strip, to have a smooth changeover from the first strip to the second. They join best when placed back to back. If we now play this composition, it will have a smooth transition at this junction, because, the last frame of this strip, and the first frame of this strip are almost same. So there is no sudden change or any flicker here. But, to loop a clip, the first frame should always match with the last frame of the clip. Only then we can loop this entire thing, and no change will be noticeable. So we will place these two frames at two ends. Let us move this strip to the first position, and this strip to the second position, like this. Now the frames at both the ends will match. But this changeover won't be smooth. So we will create an overlap between these two. Let us fine tune this in the strip properties. The first clip starts at frame number 1, and ends at 150. If we start this second strip at, frame number 120, we will have an overlap of 30 frames. And our composition should now run from 1 to, frame number 270. Now at this junction, which is frame 120. The second clip should start fading in. So, change the opacity value to 0, then right-click, and insert a keyframe here. And at this position, which is frame number 150, change the opacity to 1, and similarly insert a keyframe. So the visibility will increase from 0 to 1 during this period. And this should fade out in parallel, but with an initial delay. At this frame, the opacity should come down to zero. Again, insert a keyframe here. And somewhere, maybe here, which is frame 135, change the opacity back to one, and again, insert a keyframe. So, it will fade out during this period, and it will slowly fade in. Let us go back to the first frame and run the composition once, to see whether it goes smooth or not, through the overlap section. Fingers crossed. Yes, it goes perfectly. This is only the preview, the actual rendered video will look even better. We know that the loop will be smooth at the two ends, as they are successive frames only. You can now play this as a clip, over and over in a loop, it will be a perfect seamless loop, without any flicker anywhere. You can render this as a small video by selecting this FFMPEG option in the output. Or, you can just render this again as an image sequence and later create a GIF file from that image sequence. You can then use it anywhere, maybe in your game, or in some animation, just like a ready asset. It has a transparent background, so it will fit perfectly on any scene. Although we made this loop able clip using the fire and smoke simulation, you can follow this same technique to create a loop for any other simulation also, like a water flow simulation. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.